Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and I want to show you how two great pieces of software can work together. I'm going to do a traditional HDR merge here, and this involves using pictures that were shot in a series of brackets. In this case, I used five different photos to capture the full dynamic range of a series of images. Now, what I can do is bring these in, and you see that each picture is two stops apart. This is going to really capture the details. I shot from a tripod, but if you were handheld, you could check auto alignment to really help pull that in and make sure that everything is perfectly aligned. Now what this does is opens up the images and combines them to share all of their exposure data. This is often referred to as high dynamic range or enhanced dynamic range imagery. Let's take this full screen. Aurora HDR uses a unique approach of combining the best parts of each photo into a new photo, avoiding some of the classic HDR look that people are associating with HDR. Now, if you want that extra texture and detail, you could bring it all out with the sliders here. Aurora does fully support that, but let's go with something really natural here to start. Using the Smart Tone slider, it's super easy to recover the basic exposure get that in a place that looks good and then add a little bit of additional recovery to things like highlights and shadows so if you use highlights and shadows on a raw image using them on an hdr image brings back so much more detail which is really quite cool i would put a little bit of clarity in here so if you like the clarity slider hdr clarity does the same thing except it uses a wider area and avoids crushing detail and since this is a nighttime photo, I'll remove a little bit of the noise just to clean up that image because we shot at ISO 3200. That really helps clean that up. Now, there's lots of other things we can do here for creativity if we want, but I really like where this is going. And I just want to do one more thing before I hand the image off. Now, under the top here, you'll notice a couple of corrections. I can apply things like distortion correction to help minimize some of the wide angle distortion. In this case, that's really helping get those lines right and preventing some of the wide angle distortion that was distorting the top of this Atlas statue. Additionally, I could easily do things like tilt this picture to further emphasize the perspective. I like a little bit more perspective there. Now, let's just crop the image in. I've got a wide range of cropping options, but I could preserve the original crop or pick a new target size. In this case, you see something classic like a five by seven, and we can start to adjust that. Let's just set that to the vertical orientation. There we go. And place the image where I want, and press return. One of the last things I want to take advantage of here is one more filter that's going to make it easy to adjust the lighting, and that's the adjustable gradient. So I'll set the orientation here and put a nice ramp from the bottom and tell the bottom of the photo to get a little bit darker and to just pull down those highlights a bit and strip down the color. This way your eye is naturally guided up towards the top of the photo. All right, this looks really solid. Now I want to hand off to Perfectly Clear Complete where I could do some additional enhancement for detail and some other options. And there are two ways to get things into Perfectly Clear Complete. If you're on the Windows operating system, I would suggest you just choose to export to an image. And what you'll want to do here is give this a good name so you can easily find the image. And then pick a high quality format like Photoshop or TIFF. This will let you save this out with 16 bits per channel and lots of information and detail in the file. And that file could be easily opened up directly inside of Perfectly Clear Complete. All I have to do is switch on over and I can select that image and with a right click you can easily target Perfectly Clear Complete. There we go. And this supports a standalone workflow. You'll see that the image is now handed off and we can switch to different categories for different purposes. For example, I'm gonna to switch to perfect detail here and try the increase details preset. I like that. It's really boosting the sharpness and the color. Let's try razor sharp, night, and 
I actually like the razor sharp here. It's still got good detail. If I click, I can take a look here at the before and after, and it's subtle, but I like where that's going. Let's zoom in here so we can really see the sharpening. This is where the details come out. And this particular image as a nighttime photo is lacking a little bit. I'm gonna push that sharpening to bring back some of those details a little bit, and that's really helping. And we'll do a pass here on noise reduction to further clean up the image. That looks good. Now I can zoom back out, and I wanna enhance this a little bit with their custom vignette tools. If I scroll down, you'll see some additional options here in the side panel. And let's take advantage here of the graduated filter. What I want to do is apply the ellipse. So I'll place the center on the subject there and really take a look at this. I could adjust the shape and the red area is the inside, the blue is the outside. Let's pull that size in a little bit. I like that. And really take a look at the feather for a nice gentle transition. Once you've got that in a place where you like it, you can now make other adjustments. Let's get out of the split screen view here, and I'm really pulling down the shadows around the image. That's a nice dramatic vignette. What I want to do as well is play with the color vibrance to back down that area outside of the subject. I like that. And I think just a little bit more highlights there. It's going to pop that nicely, and we'll bring up the contrast. Now we've got a nice focus on the photo itself, and I really like that. If we take a look here on the left, there's also a series of creative looks. Both inside of Aurora and Perfectly Clear, you can use this look technology to apply a different style of imagery, and you'll find these recipes here. Aurora supports LUTs, and Perfectly Clear uses these things called looks, but they're really just lookup tables. And now with a single click, I can apply a different type of recipe depending upon what it is I'm going for. I like this deep blue. And then with the strength slider here, I can adjust that to refine it until I get the overall look that I want. Now that I'm satisfied, I'll click the save button and it gives me the ability to save this out. I'm going to suggest that we write this and it'll put a new extension on. And let's save this out as a high quality TIFF with Adobe RGB and click Save. Now the file is written to disk and I've got the finished image. There we go. And we're all done.